So come, enjoy some pancakes, and support the youth. Um, they're going to Las Cruces, New Mexico this year. So come and um, support their trip. And then on Wednesday, is Ash Wednesday. So we'll do Ashes to Go from 7 to 8.30, which means you can come up here. Um, I'll give you your ashes. We'll pray together, and we'll send you on your way to work. Um, but there's also a service at noon, um, a spoken service, and a service at 7 p.m. in the choir. Um, there are a couple of opportunities for Lent formation, and we'll talk about it uh, at Adult Education today. Um, a couple other things, I feel like there's a lot going on here. So, um, the survey deadline is tomorrow. You have, if you haven't filled out the Holy Cow survey, that helps us sort of understand where you're at and where we want to go, how we can best communicate with you, please fill that out today or the latest tomorrow. Tomorrow's the deadline. Um, we've also finally have your giving statements for 2022. Um, if, you, if I have your email, I've sent those out to you over email. Um, otherwise, we'll be mailing them out this week. Um, and if you don't get anything sometime this week, let me know and I'll be sure to get something uh, to you. Um, and again, it's so great to be back here. It takes so many, so many hands and feet and hearts um, to make worship happen every Sunday and definitely a Sunday after freeze. Um, and I also invite you, if you haven't um, had a chance to walk through the back rooms, we've got new flooring, <laughs> it's all good. nice. So anyway, just really happy to be back here and so grateful to, that the bells are ringing us back into the church. Um, the opening hymn today is hymn 618. <laughs>
Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Revealed his glory upon the holy mountain. Grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for me. of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant, Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud, and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The responsorial reading aside from today is a portion of Psalm 99. We will pray this responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is king. 
let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. For the Lord is great in Zion, he is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. Almighty King, the Lord of Justice, you have established equity, you have executed justice and righteousness in the air. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Blessed is the Aaron among his priests, and the same among those who call upon his name. They call upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill, for the Lord our God is the Holy One. A reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will. But men and women, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John, 
and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. His face shines like the sun, not from sweat, and his clothes are dazzling white instead of what my clothes would look like after a long hike. And the term transfiguration is used to refer to this change in form or appearance. It's an interesting move because Jesus didn't need to go undergo this transformation for Peter, James, and John to know that they were following someone special. In the Gospel, this takes place not long after Peter acknowledges that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And six days after Jesus first told them, 
that he will go to Jerusalem and he will be killed and on the third day be raised to life. The Bible doesn't say this, but I imagine that the disciples are having a hard time with this news. So it makes sense that Peter wants to build these tents, these dwellings. He wants to keep the Son of the Living God close by. He wants his teacher, his friend, to stay. As he was making those plans, a voice from the clouds interrupted him. Peter, James, and John had taken the bright clothes and the shining face in stride. But when they heard that voice, fear overcame them, and they fell to the ground. Their minds had been filled with human concerns, like building tents and dwellings. And the voice reminded them that they were part of something bigger, something harder to predict and make sense of, Something of God's. The Sundays in this season of Epiphany began with the story of Jesus' baptism and ends with the story of Jesus' transfiguration. This puts him on the road to his death and resurrection, but that's a sermon for Ash Wednesday or the first Sunday of Lent. Today, we're still on the top of the mountain. And what does this mountaintop experience tell us? This is a story we read every year. And this year, three details from today's gospel reading stand out. They draw a line from our baptism to the transfiguration of Jesus. They are a reminder that baptism is an invitation to transformation. It sets us on the path to something bigger, something harder to predict and make sense of, something of God's. The three details are the clothes, the face, and the company. The so first, the clothes. Jesus' clothes are dazzling white. The letter to the Galatians, Paul writes, all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Parents almost always dress babies and toddlers in white for their baptism. And in some churches, the sponsors help the newly baptized put on robes, like the ones that we wear up here, after they've been baptized. And those of us who serve at the altar wear these robes over our normal clothes. This shows that no matter how different we are from each other, we are one in Christ because we have clothed ourselves with Christ. There are lots of paintings and sculptures and stained glass windows of Jesus. I think it's pretty safe to say that we don't wear what he wears in any other story but this one, and definitely not what he wears or doesn't wear at his baptism in the Jordan River. And what we wear at our baptism reflects what he wears after his transfiguration. It is a promise of how we can become one body, differences and all, with God's help. Second, the face. Jesus' face shone like the sun. The writers of the Gospels use this detail as a callback to the book of Exodus. As Moses came down Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. And it shone in such a way that Aaron and the Israelites were afraid to come near him. Jesus, the Son of God, is even closer to God. His face shone like the sun, but not in a way that caused the disciples to be afraid. At baptism, we light a candle from the Paschal candle from the Easter candle, and hand it to the newly baptized. Jesus is the light of the world, and this reminds us that we have received the light of Christ. Then it's up to us to figure out how to let that light shine through our life. It's the changes in our form and appearance that signal to others that we have been transformed 
by our encounter with God. It's changes like these that invite them to undergo their own transformation. Third, the company. Once Jesus has undergone his transfiguration, the disciples see him talking with Moses and Elijah, the symbols of law and prophecy. When we become part of the body of Christ, we join their ongoing conversation about what those laws and prophecies mean for us in this day and age. Just as Gentiles join the long-running conversation between God and the people of Israel, with humility we recognize that we are simply the latest to engage in these age-old questions, and we have a lot to learn. As members of the body of Christ, we join the community of saints, the people who have wrestled with how to translate scripture from words into action for their times. We study their words and learn from their stories. These are people who have struggled to not just hear Jesus, but to truly listen to him so that they might follow in his footsteps. They don't just exist in the past or on a pedestal. They are all around us. We may not always succeed, just as Moses and Elijah can always get it. We may not know as much as we want or have more doubts than we think we should. But if we stop engaging, we stop asking questions. The light will never shine in those dark places. So we keep turning back to scripture, to the laws and prophecies, next to other people of faith. This company we keep will guide and transform us, and in turn, we will, each of us, transform this body. It's been interesting to hold these readings in my mind this week as we've been cleaning up the church building and assembly room so that we can worship here today. Moments like this Weeks like this show us who we are and who we are on our way toward becoming. My heart jumped for joy every time I saw a car pull up and y'all just kept coming. And it wasn't just because many cans make the work go quickly or make the weight of the responsibility a little lighter. It was because that working side by side gives us the opportunity to be in each other's company, to hear and share our stories. We get to shine a light for one another and to experience our church community through a different light. It hints at what we can become when we can come together as the body of Christ, each with our tools and gifts and mountaintop experiences. Moments like this add up over time. Moments like this transform all the members and the body as a whole. We keep having moments like this, and then one day a voice from the clouds, or a voice from this community, or a voice from this neighborhood, will put words to what we have become. Oh, you're from St. Albans? St. Albans is a place where the people of St. Albans are dot, dot, dot. I don't know how those blanks will be filled in yet, but it will be something bigger than we can imagine, something harder to predict and make sense of, something of God's. So let's discover the answers together. Now let us stand and read from our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We 
believe in one God. Shine in your church, O God. Embolden us in a dark world to speak truthfully and to act with the courage of love. This day and always. Christ be our life. Shine on your world, O God. Heal the warring of nations and the wounding of the earth to give us peace at last. This day and always. Shine for your people, O God. Make us one human family who clothe each other with mercy and feed each other with justice. This day and always. Shine in our hearts, O God. Help us to reach to the heavens and deepen our souls to seek you, to find you. And to know this day and always. Christ be our light. Guide in the saints and departed, O oh God. Teach us to follow their lead to outrageous faith and eternal love. This day and always. Christ be our light. Shine for the afflicted, O oh God. Remind them of your deep compassion and how you tenderly bear all our sorrows. This day and always, Christ be our light. Shine, O God, as the light that creates, the light that calls, the light that comes again with every dawn. Shine as the light that scatters every shadow and the light in which we promise to walk with your help. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So a couple of instructions for Holy Communion. Um, if you want to come up and get a regular wafer, just hold your hand out like this. If you need a gluten-free wafer, cover your hand and we'll know to get you something gluten-free. And if you would like to come up for a blessing, cross your arm and I'll be happy to offer you a blessing. And again, thank you all so much for being part of the life here, whether it's your first time here or your X number of years here. Um, by being here, you make this place what it is, and you make us who we are. I'm just so grateful for that. And so now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labors.
with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on them in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
Candy O'Neill, let us pray together the closing day in prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us out into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the members of Community Group, which is a lay chaplaincy program, to come up um, for their recommissioning. If you're part of the Community of Hope, then you're being recommissioned. So these are lay chaplains. They hold uh, folks in prayer and they visit. Um, we're soon going to do lay and person visitor training, so if you're at home, um, because you're sick and you can't make it to church, so they can bring communion to you. Um, they organize meal trains for folks who need it, um, and do so many other wonderful things. Reverend Kennedy, also Reverend Kennedy, 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 Reverend Kennedy,
And now please stand for the final blessing. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of the God who creates and recreates us, who loves us, and who walks with us be with you now and always. Amen. The closing hymn is hymn 135.